Hey, welcome back, guys. As you can see, I have finished off the roto. Um, I've added in the mouth and chin area, and as you can see, I've just done. I've just tried to keep most of the solid parts of the face. I haven't tried to get in the beard and all the fine hair detail. Um, as you can see there, it's missing that detail now. So what I will show you how to do is to get some of this detail back using some keying techniques. Okay, so if you follow this down from my tree here, my no tree, you can see that this top line is just coming from the main footage. So if I just push control to create a dot node, and if I just type in Kia, push tab and type Kia, I can now plug that in. I'll just make sure I'm viewing it. And now if I push A on the viewer, you can see I'm looking at the alpha channel. And what I want to do now is just play with these sliders and try to keep the beard as white as you can as you can because basically whatever the whiter something's going to be the more solid or the more opaque it will be in your key or in the mat so what I'm going to do is just try to get rid of as much of the background detail as possible and keep as much of the beard as I can or the hair detail okay now to limit this key to just sort of the beard where the hair is I'm just going to push M to create a merge node and change the operation to in and sort of attach that to a rotor node. And I do still have the tracking information from earlier if you remember part one. So what I can do is do the same technique we did before and double click on the tracker and open up the roto. and on both of these go to the transform tab actually first you need to create a folder in your roto so you go, we've got a folder there and now go to the transform tabs of both and shift click and drag down all these values to the same value so i.e. scale to scale rotate to rotate and center to center okay so now that folder will be using the tracking information Okay, so if I go into the roto now, and what I do is I draw a really rough sort of shape just around, we'll start with the top here, just around this bit of hair. So what that's going to say is only use the key within this area, so within this roto. So if you look through that now, you can see it's just keeping that. So as you can see, it's moving because of the tracking information we did earlier. Now in this particular example, the track markers happen to be the same sort of or similar kind of color so it's obviously keeping that in the key as well so just for this example I'm going to go and just refine the rotor in just these areas where it crosses so I'll just pull them in and obviously you can gauge from the result whether that's you know how effective that is what you would probably want to do in this example if you're doing the shot properly is maybe do a frame hold for the frame before the tracking markers come in and then just sort of track on that hair pieces just for the frames that go over the tracker but in this example as I said I'm not going to bother to do that I'm just going to go and ref and sort of refine this rotor just to keep it around the beard the bits of the moustache in this case and as you can see I just need to probably refine the key just to get rid of some of this background information that's coming in in the key let me just first finish this rotor okay so you can see here if I go back to the key and I just tweak these handles a bit there you go just to sort of tighten up that key a little bit and let me just go through and you can see how this works so now the rotor is hot keeping the key in the sort of just in this area just keep refining it just a little bit. And you have to just keep going through and refining it. Like I said, in this case, I'm just going to pull the roto a lot tighter when the tracking markers come in. As you can see there, 
I've got the roto and it's working quite nicely. And you can do the same process again with this bottom lip and all the facial hair around here. And I'm just going to do this area here just to show you again. So now the same process as before. You just go through now and refine your roto just to keep the key in this area. Okay, so once you've gone and done that for this bit as well, we're just going to have to now add the couple of keys together with the rotor as well. So if you look here at the merge in, you can see the two bits of keying for the hair detail. And here's the roto mat. So the way I like to do it is I just use a merge node and I change the operation to max. And then you can literally add in quite a few different inputs. As you can see under A1 I've got the roto, A2 I've got a different mat and A3 I've got the mat that we've just done now. So as you add them together, you see you've got this one here and when you add it all together you get, well if I look at the alpha channel, we can see if I pre-multiply the alpha channel I get that. So what I'm going to do is just turn off the fine hair detail just to show you the difference let's just get the right one okay here we go so if I zoom in here now you can see the difference that that's making so if I zoom in a little bit more you can really see the difference now I mean what you could probably do as well if you wanted to refine it a bit is just go to the Kia now and you could just change some of the sliders just to pump up the opacity or the, the opaqueness of the key in this area but um, that's all dependent on the shot that you're working on uh, you know your shot might be different but you can go and tweak that however you need to okay now I'm going to give you another example of the keying and adding this to the mat so if you look here at the hand and the sort of scalpel if we go through the channels you can see um, we could probably do another luminance key just to keep this area rather than doing roto so what I'll do now is I'm just gonna move some of this other all these other nodes out the way and then just follow this main footage tree down okay so what I'll do now is I shall add a key once again and plug that into the background footage just push control to make a dot just to make everything a little bit neater I just move this out the way just a bit just to keep everything neat okay so what I'll do now is look at the key and push A to view the alpha channel and once again I'm just gonna play with the slider just to sort of make the area you want to keep as white as possible and make the area that you don't want to keep as dark as possible so it's just a case of playing with the slider until you get the right sort of um, values what I'll do now is I'll blur the alpha channel as well just slightly just to give it a slightly softened edge okay once again what we would need to do is do some roto just to tell it to to use the key in this area so once again I'll change the merge to in so what it's saying is only use the key within this area of the roto so if you attach the rotor to the A pipe and just double click on that and you can come in now and create a really really rough rotor and we're just going to be keeping the alpha channel within this area okay so if we view that you can see what I mean so 
So all we have to do now is go through the footage and just move the rotor around just to make sure it's keeping this area that we want. And what I'll do now is I'll just go through and refine this a bit. I've just now sped this up just because it's the same process again. So it's just going in and refining the rotor basically, same as we've done before. Okay, so once we've done that now, we will have a alpha channel for this area, which will be the key and the merge in rotor. So as you can see, we'll just take a look at that result. So if I click on the merge in, that's our normal alpha. And that's once we've told it to only work within that rotor. Now what we need to do is just add that to our alpha channel for our main rotor. So if we just go to the merge max node, just go on the left hand side, if we just drag the a second input just to that, that will now add the two mats together. So if we look at that result, we can see we now have the hand and we should have the face with that as well. So you can see that over here. So here we have the final result. So what we've done is basically taken the background We've then tracked in the, a checkerboard just to put on top of the screen. And then using the roto and keying that we did, we've created a mat. That mat then pre-multiplies the footage, which then gets put back on top of the checkerboard. So this will give you the result here that you can see. So here's some of the roto that we did. And obviously we've got the keying that you, see, that you saw earlier. So it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, if you've got any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, please be sure to subscribe and keep coming back and seeing some of these great tutorials. Thanks guys and catch you next time.